All right, we are getting ready to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Chapter 3. Um, in order to become a uh, good machinist or a manufacturing engineer, um, industrial engineer, uh, any type of quality control person, uh, even basic operators, whether you're operating a drill press or a mill or a lathe, uh, manual machines or CNC equipment machines, uh, being able to read technical drawings is a big facet of the actual job and one of the basic skills that's required. So we're going to talk just a little bit about uh, reading technical drawings. Uh, of course, it, as part of your degree, you are required to take um, either a blueprint reading class or the um, drafting class uh, so that you know and can understand this. I will state that there is a difference between uh, being able to read a print and being able to draw a print in CAD. They are different skill sets, even though they are closely related. And of course, in this class, in ENGT 150 and uh, ENGT 151, you will need to be able to kind of take a look and, and read some of the basic uh, ideas. We will incorporate prints that you will be making parts from, and you'll need to understand how to both read that print to get dimensions and sizes, as well as to be able to take a look at that print uh, to know how we're going to go about to machine it. So I will uh, mention here that uh, the blueprint, so long as the blueprint has been done correctly, does include everything that we as a machining, uh, as a machinist, need to know in order to basically go and make that part from raw material into a finished final product part at the very end. So, so all of our instructions are right there in that blueprint. So, so we're going to kind of go through this fairly quick. Uh, you're going to get a basic understanding of this. So, uh, Understand that blueprint reading is a universal language. It is a graphic language as opposed to a spoken uh, language. Although we do have um, a, a lot of symbols that you will need to know and understand um, as we start to look and how we use this to communicate uh, both design ideas uh, as well as design intent uh, behind these different part drawings as well. All right. So again, um, this is not a full course in print reading. You will need to go further in depth in terms of actually learning this. You will also need to get a lot of practice on the job uh, working with um, senior, well-seasoned professionals uh, and other journey people to kind of point out uh, how to read these drawings and then apply them on the job as well. So uh, you also get a better understanding of uh, different types of mill specs or uh, materials and other notes and notations depending on what industry uh, you're working in because even though there are uh, general commonalities behind all of these print, uh, prints and it is a universal language uh, sometimes the way that language is applied changes depending on the industry that you're actually working in uh, there as well so automotive here is for one example uh, you've got the healthcare and um, industry as another one, and of course, aerospace. Now, uh, I haven't done a whole lot to myself in the healthcare industry, uh, but and most of my background um, is in the uh, canning industry, but I've also done a lot for aerospace and some in the automotive as well. All right, so, so some of the skills that uh, you're going to be looking at here is what we refer to as the orthographic projection system. Uh, we're going to re refer to the alphabet of lines. You will need to know uh, what those line types are by the end. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we are uh, looking at and visualizing these drawings so that we can use that to solve problems uh, related to the machining uh, applications that we're going to be using. So as we take a look at these, uh, the textbook goes into uh, engineering drawings and work orders. So um, mentions about how they kind of go together and they are related. Um, I will also not just kind of say about uh, engineering drawings and work orders. Um, I will even kind of refer to as in, uh, and mention the um, 
different types of documents that are related to quality control and our SP um, C sheets or our check sheets, different types of inspection reports. A lot of the documentation that is out there being utilized on the shop floor is directly related to the engineering drawing. Even though as a operator, you may or may not be able to see that full drawing. Uh, they might have you um, looking at work orders or looking at inspection sheets and making uh, parts and kind of doing things in a different way. So. Um, whether you agree with that, I don't always agree with that uh, particular methodology on some of the different companies around the area. Uh, that's okay, so we can agree to disagree. Part of my disagreement is the fact that I was always taught and trained that we make parts to print and that that print is the fundamental uh, aspect of being able to read um, and know what you're supposed to be able to do, understanding the uh, aspects of what you are doing to the part for your particular operation and how that impacts or has an effect on uh, the individuals that will be doing things to that part after you have passed it on and moved it to the next um, particular operation. All right, so there are two different types of print reading skills. First, we're going to talk about visualization, basically how we can see and recognize what we're looking at and how that is related to our three-dimensional world. Uh, and then we talk about the interpretation aspects of it, so understanding what the uh, notes are and the written information and the symbols and, and how those symbols relate from one view to another so so you do have two different print reading skills that you're going to be getting involved here and that's both visualization and interpretation i would say that the bigger um, skill that needs to be developed at this stage for you is the visualization aspect so if you can't visualize what's going on on these prints you're you're certainly not going to be able to uh, make some interpretations on uh, that so so we're going to concentrate um, on understanding and being able to visualize things first and then we will move on from that um, once you've got a good understanding of the orthographic projection all right, so as this says, um, interpreting a drawing mostly occurs after visualiz visualizing the image. The idea that we can take a look at the print and then be able to see what that's going to look like in our head, uh, know where we're going to need to remove material from or try to put things together. So uh, we need to have a good understanding of that as we look at these technical specifications. So as we look at um, visualization, a uh, working drawing basically and a multi-view isometric projection uh, gives us two dimension images and uh, each of those images or each of those projections shows us two dimensions. Uh, then we need to manipulate that around in order to get that three dimensional concept in our mind. So. This is something that is a lot easier nowadays, I think, than it has been in the past, predominantly because of uh, newer computer technology and the software that's being used uh, in terms of CAD, computer-aided drafting software, where we are doing solid modeling. Uh, the ability to draw and create a solid model is uh, definitely helping people to have a better understanding of how to visualize know and uh, see and be able to recognize uh, how these parts would look like in real life once they are finished machining. So, and as you notice down here, so even, no matter however uh, as useful as solid are, uh, you still as a machinist still need to learn how to visualize these orthographic projections, uh, which is still a baseline skill. Now, whether that will continue or not in the future or not, uh, that still remains to be seen. So, and I think uh, right there uh, at this point uh, with this particular unit, so this is chapter three in the text, by the way, um, but that I think is a good point for us to stop.